all of Canada's newest two-star diamond coach. She attended leadership with us in Arizona as Danielle's guest, and I got to meet her there, which was awesome. She's from New Glasgow, married. I think that's her husband. Yep. Wishing her support. <laughs> um, two teenage children, coaching for two and a half years, 30 months of success club, and like I said, newest two-star diamond coach. I am excited to welcome Lori Totten to speak to us today. <laughs> but I probably won't use them, but they're there just in case. Um, it's hard following, uh, of course, uh, Carl and Michael and Lori and, uh, and I mean, the new super trainer, Lacey, like who didn't kind of cheer up a little? I know I did. So, so anyway, I wasn't nervous till that, and, <laughs> but it's all good. So when I was asked to present today, I had just found out that uh, I just uh, reached Two Star Diamond. So they were kind of like, well, maybe you want to talk about that journey. But uh, to me, um, I was a huge imposter. I don't know if any of you ever feel like this, but I know it's something I struggle with on a daily basis. I thought to myself, I can't talk about it becoming a two-star diamond. I can barely talk about becoming an emerald. To me, um, it's just something that I still to this day struggle with. Um, I feel that even though I've achieved these goals or uh, whatever, that I'm still not filling the shoes that other people fill. So anyone else in this room feel like an imposter at some times? Yeah, good. I'm not alone. Thank God. I thought, oh shit, I'm going to get up here and I'll be the only one. Um, so when I first uh, started this journey, I was in the midst of a crisis. There was a global pandemic. Our son had been going through a three-year mental health crisis on his own. I was battling uh, anybody who would want to come... Uh, come near us. We were fighting the mental health system, we were fighting the government, we were fighting everything. And amongst all that, uh, I was suffering from daily panic attacks. Many of those led me to the hospital thinking that I was having a heart attack myself. And to boot, I was overweight and I felt like crap. So on May 28th, 2020, I called upon my still uh, coach uh, and friend and mentor, uh, Danielle, to sign me up once again. But under no circumstances was I going to be a coach. I was like, I am just signing up. I need to do something, get my shit together. Pardon me for the language if there's little ones. But I had I'd spent three years using all of my energy to fight the system to get help for my son. I was completely broken, I was exhausted, and it was just time for someone else to save my life for a change instead of me focusing on everybody else, which I had felt like I had done. I was tired. But after I signed up as a coach with, or I signed up as a coach because back then we were all discount coaches and I just wanted to save some money on Shakeology because I had, I loved the product, I had done it in the past. And but the difference was that time on that day, on May 28th, 2020, when I was laying on my couch crying before messaging Danielle. Once I signed up with her, it was the first time I felt a little spark, a little sparkle. I was saving my life, even though I was looking for someone else to save it. I'll get you to change the slide. But who the hell would want to join me? Even though I told her I wasn't going to be a coach, I knew that that's how I had to save my own life. It wasn't because I had signed up under Danielle and yes, I looked forward to her guidance, but I knew that I wasn't alone in this. But who would wanna join me when I don't have my own life together? Who would wanna join me when I was suffering from panic attacks on a daily basis? Who would wanna join me 
when wine became my best friend during the pandemic and like so many of us, how could I relate to anybody when I was sitting well over 200 pounds and feeling like crap and hadn't worked out and I would rather, you know, embrace a bag of chips than embrace a salad. But that was my first step into feeling my first part of being an imposter. It was tough. But on that day, I said, even though I said no to Danielle to becoming a coach, I sucked it up. I shared my journey online. She didn't even know I shared this. <laughs> and I signed up three people. I hit Success Club that day or the next day. It was May 28th. Success Club won in the books already. I didn't care. I didn't really. It wasn't a matter of me hitting Success Club. It was a matter of if I'm going to do this journey, we're in the midst of a goddamn crisis and we're all in lockdown. I need other people to help me as much as I'm going to help them. So, I'll do the next slide. Imposter syndrome. What exactly is it? It's a psychological occurrence which an individual's doubts, an individual doubts their skills, talents, or accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. I don't know if anybody is new to this uh, this term but this is something I struggle with on a daily basis um, kind of spoke about it at the beginning but uh, yeah this picture here this was taken about seven weeks six to seven weeks after I started uh, my beach body journey we weren't quite in lockdown at that pl that point but Danielle had a group, a Airbnb for the weekend, which is amazing. She always does these great things for our team. And she invited us to go uh, for this summit thing. I don't know, I didn't know what summit was. She said it was important, but because of the global <laughs> pandemic, we all had to uh, watch it virtually because this year they were supposed to be somewhere in the States. I forget where it was supposed to be that year, but of course everything got shut down. So she invited me to come to this. I remember, you know, this was my first outing uh, without the kids in forever. You know, we had just been struggling to get through most weekends, most days with our son at that point. The only road trips were to the hospital, to the IWK, things like that, or what have you. So it was a big deal to be invited to this, but with that came a lot of fear. That, oh, not yet. <laughs> I'm just looking at myself here. <laughs> that dress. Whew. That was the first time I had to get dressed up in a long time. And let me tell you, the spanks were under there. <laughs> I don't know. I did not feel like I belonged when I walked in that door. Thank God when I first got there, I can't even remember where this place was. It was up some godforsaken long road and you're driving there just thinking, kind of sweating, going, I don't know anybody other than Danielle. It had been forever since I even seen Danielle in person. This was our first time meeting. I remember walking into the Airbnb I'm an early bird, so I was the first person there, of course. I always like to be the first person there. I was like, oh, thank God, because Danielle's here. It'll take some of the edge off. And I can remember she had out her laptop, and she was speaking to someone on corporate. And I think it was Jake's story. Jeff. Or it was Jeff. And I was like, oh, my God, what the hell is she talking about? And she's talking about all these things and missed opportunities and points and blah, 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 and income. And I'm just like, I have no idea what the hell she's talking about. I'm like, all I know is that you're supposed to sign up people. And I'm here at this weekend for this summit thing. I still don't really understand what summit is. I didn't know who our CEO of the company was at that point. And then I thought, I don't belong here. Whew, I don't belong here. No one else had even arrived yet. I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, everybody coming to this event is established. They know what the hell she's talking about to this guy from corporate. They have been in this business forever. 
they probably aren't wearing Spanx because they're at their goal weight already and feel great and look great. And I'm supposed to work out with these people tomorrow. Oh my God. And then the people started to come into the room. They started to show up one by one. And one by one, every face looked like a little different, just like it does out here in the crowd. Not everybody had been a coach for, you know, at that point, Danielle was a coach for 10 years. Not everybody filled those shoes that I had envisioned in my mind of how everybody else should look or be. You know, I found out that there was a coach uh, who had just signed up a week ago. There was a coach who had been in the business for a couple of years, coaches that, you know, haven't done anything in the business, but still show up and are committed to this day. So my imposter syndrome slowly went away and I felt more comfortable as the day went on. Come that evening, uh, the Saturday evening, it was the next evening, we watched the summit, the virtual summit, all together. I finally got to see who this Carl dude was. And I knew I was where I should be. All of those fears really were put aside. Thank God it was after having to wear this dress for the team photos. I was able to put some comfy clothes on and sit down with a glass of wine and watch summit. And that was at the point in my life where I said, I think... I can do this. I really think I am built to do this. It was all aside from the fact that when I arrived there, um, I'll get you to change the slide now, I felt I didn't deserve to be there. But in fact, I did. Danielle invited me. I should trust those, uh, the judgment of those who invited me. I'm here because I earned it. At that point, I simply earned it because I had joined up and been a part of the team. Just like everybody here, you are a part of the team, whether you're a coach or a customer, or maybe a friend that makes you part of the team. I showed up at that Airbnb, being an Emerald coach already, having uh, only been in the business seven weeks, I earned, uh, I was a success starter because I earned Success Club in May, June, and July before going there. Still didn't really understand any of the business, but it was at that final point that after those realizations, after seeing uh, Carl Deichler speak on stage, or the virtual stage, and being amongst that group of women who was so welcoming that I knew that I belonged. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get to my slide here. All right. Oh, I'm going backwards. That's not going to help me here. That didn't help. What's my next slide? That's going to help me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so the imposter syndrome. Here's a little brief synopsis of what it looks like. What I know versus what I think others know, and then what I, I know versus what others know. So kind of like with Danielle, when I walked in and she's on that computer going, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't understand a single word that's coming out of her mouth. I think a lot of us, when we sign up for this coaching opportunity, we all have that moment of going, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Help. I'm two and a half years into this business and I still have those days. But here's the beauty, and I know uh, the veteran coaches in here can attest to this, is that when they started, they really didn't have that opportunity to learn it all and know it all. Whether you're a 15-star diamond coach or a coach who just signed up yesterday, we have the same tools in our back office that all of those successful coaches have. And that's an amazing thing. We have trainings, we have you know the national wake up call every Monday, we have our upline, we have so many resources that really puts a difference between what they know versus what I know. Maybe you haven't accumulated that knowledge yet, 
but there's no reason that you can't. There's no magic uh, button out there that these top coaches, whether you've been in the industry a day, a month, a year, or 10 years, that you can't find out the answers to it. So it's really good that we are in a community where the doors are wide open. It's, it's there for us to, uh, to embrace that knowledge. All right, let's go to the next slide. Uh, next slide, yeah, and then the next, thank you. So throughout my journey, this is really come into play. Um, you're gonna see a video, a short 50 second video after this, John Acuff. If you don't know who John Acuff is, he is an amazing author and speaker. He has a book called, oh my God. Soundtracks. Soundtracks, thank you. <laughs> Soundtracks. And I really think that if you are struggling with the imposter syndrome or just that dialogue that goes on inside your head telling you things are different than they actually are because that's the way you've always said it, I highly recommend this. So something, uh, when I picked up this book a couple of years ago, really stuck out and it still sticks out. Is what I'm saying true? Are the stories that I'm telling myself actually true? Are there facts to support my feelings or is it just insecurities? How many in the room today when they walked in, this was their first Beachbody event? Show of hands. Yeah. How many of you walked in and had that moment of, I don't know if I belong here? Maybe you've been to these events before, but you're feeling, I don't know if I belong here. Is that true? Nope. Is that an insecurity or is it a fact? Chances are it's our insecurities coming out. The moment that you decided that you were gonna sign up with Beachbody, it became a fact that you belonged here. Whether it's day one, day 101, day 1001, you belong here because you have decided to be a Beachbody customer or a Beachbody coach. There is no guidelines as to your rank advancement, why you can't be in this room today, whether this you've never signed up a customer, whether you've signed up thousands, we all belong here. Is what I'm telling myself helpful or kind? Is it helping your business, your customers, your own personal growth? If you're waking up every morning saying, I don't think I can do this, I'm not as good as the other guys, I'll never be an Emerald coach, I'll never be a Diamond coach, I'll never have my own team. How's that gonna help your business? How are you going to succeed and grow? How's that gonna help your own personal journey? Because it's not about always reaching the ranks. It's about showing up daily for yourself, daily for your family, daily for your team. You all deserve to be here. This is my big question. Now, John Ancuff didn't put the, this in his book, but I think he should. I think he needs to revise it. <laughs> what if? What if I just did all the actions and stopped believing that it was only possible for the other guys? What if are the two words that have changed my business? My first what if came when Rachel, uh, one of the leaders on our team, was going for One Star Diamond. And we were on a, a power hour together. I was diamond already. And I was there supporting Rachel every step of the way. And I was like, yeah, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this. And then I looked at my own stats in the back office and I thought, well, shit, what if? What if I could be One Star? And I locked it in. Woo. Me and her locked it in together. Woo. But no one, it didn't even dawn on me till that evening working with her on a power hour that that was in my realm of possibilities because it's for the other guys. 
I always thought opportunities were for the other guys. I grew up in a household where we were not praised. It was my single dad raising me. No one ever said, what if? He was the, well, it must be nice. He's still that way, a very pessimistic, down in the dumps. He thinks that opportunities are for everybody else. So I have, I'm 47, I have a lot of years to try to reverse that. And thank God for personal development. Lori spoke about that, how it's made an impact in her life. And I can't imagine not having personal development because it really does. How many people have yet to open up a PD book or Audible? It's okay. <laughs> you don't have to raise your hands. But if you've been on the struggle bus with that, I really recommend. And what a great idea to have the table back there today to exchange personal development. Because honestly, it's made all the difference in my life. You know, I. I don't go to therapy, I probably should, but thank God, <laughs> thank God for personal development. So the what ifs really helped. The second what if that really impacted my life was on a day not long ago when Danielle messaged me and she's like, hey, you think you can get two star? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> and then she showed me the way and the possibilities that it wasn't a, it wasn't that far off reach. And I locked it in. In days. What if? In days. What if? Every single thing, every moment in my entire life, what if has changed my life? What if I moved? What if I took this job? What if I, you know, did this? What if I did that? Not, sometimes the what ifs lead you down the path that maybe it wasn't exactly what you thought it would be, but without exploring the what ifs, I wouldn't be here today talking. And you guys wouldn't be here either if you didn't take that chance of what if. We'll play the video now. <laughs> So here's something I've been thinking a lot about lately. A person committed to fear will not be converted by fact. You can't change somebody who's committed to fear with facts. And here's why. Fear starts as a feeling. You feel afraid. But then if you listen to it, then if you believe it, then if you lean into it, then if you play it a thousand times, it moves from a feeling into a belief. And then if you spend enough time with the belief, it becomes part of your identity. And it's really hard to change somebody's identity. That's why you'll see somebody go, hey, well, here's a bunch of facts and they'll fight it because you're threatening not just their feeling, now it's at the identity level. Fear goes from a feeling into a belief, into an identity. So when you feel afraid, deal with it, process it, work through it. Be careful you don't let it turn into a belief and then part of your identity. So kind of like the uh, the Chronicle or the uh, the park thing with Lori, this came up this week as I knew this was going to be my part of my speech, and I thought, how true is that? That fear becomes part of our identity, and fear is what leads to that imposter syndrome because we tell ourselves so many things that we start to believe it, but there's no facts to support any of that. It's just our insecurities and our belief. We'll go to the next slide. So, good things take long time, or take time. That's me at the base of the summit stage this year. I'll walk across that stage yet. But uh, Rachel and I took our pictures there this year. Um, that was an opportunity that you know is available for every single person in this room. Whether you're going to be walking across stage or sitting in that room, you belong there. Next slide. So we're going to go through this quite quickly because all of you think that there's a magic to this business that if I just had, if I just had the magic book, I could make all of this happen. You already know it. And if you're a new coach, you'll get to know this. Success Club, it's a non-negotiable. 
If you haven't determined that, that to be your non-negotiable in this business and you want this business to bring in income, Success Club should be there. I know it's big and scary to invite three people every single month to join you, but it really will make that difference. And like Lori said, in the long term, you know, when things happen, that financial gain, you know, insert disclaimer right here, can make all the difference. Invite. We all assume that everybody knows we're a beach body coach and then they're just gonna fall on our doorstep or in our inbox. But if you're not inviting personally, how do they know you're talking to them? Because I can guarantee there's a lot of imposters out on Facebook and Instagram who assume that you're talking to everybody else other than them. Well, I couldn't join that, I'm overweight. I couldn't join that because I don't belong there. So check that you make sure that you're making those personal invitations to everybody. Same goes with number three, and I struggle with this one. I'll be the first to admit, ask them to join you. And that comes to building your team. How are people gonna know that you want them on your team unless you ask them? Same thing is, once you get your challengers, well, that's not me. She's not talking to me when she says, I need a coach or I want that. I could never do what she's doing. She has all these skills. She knows all this stuff. She does this. Insert imposter syndrome. We reach so many people on a daily basis that are fighting this imposter syndrome that we have no idea. We think that they're not connecting to us because it's something personal. It's something with them. Something is hurting or broke inside them. And it's our opportunity as coaches, not only to help ourselves, but help others realize that the potential lies in them and that they're just filling themselves up with a story that they've told themselves, an insecurity that they've told themselves. They don't realize that they can be everything that they need to be and want to be. Be coachable. One of the hard things for a lot of people to do is take the information and do something with it. How many of us have taken notes and notes and notes on calls, we think, oh my God, that's such a great idea. I'm gonna do that on Monday, thank you so much. And then Monday rolls around and it goes in a drawer. Uh, we never look at the notepad pad again until we need to make a grocery list with it. You know, <laughs> we've all been there. But part of being a great coach and a great challenger and a great person is to be coachable and to take the ideas that are being presented to you, to take the ideas from the national wake-up call, from the back office, from your upline, from your friends and the coaching business, and take it and go with it. You know, our information that we get is only as good as we apply it. We could be have a lot of information up here, but unless you set forth and do something about it, you're never gonna achieve it. Next slide. So, how do we do it? Keep showing up. Every single one of us in the room has or will face a storm during your journey. Do you have a plan in place for your storm? That is what I tell every single one of my challengers and coaches who start. Okay, this is all great. You're all fired up, it's day one, but what happens when the storm comes? And if you don't know what a storm comes or what a storm is, that could be financial. It could be the breakup of a marriage. It could be health issue. It could be anything that stops you in your tracks from doing what you're doing. For me, I have three non-negotiables for my health storm. They are eat a healthy breakfast at home every single day. And if I'm not at home, I can still manage to get a healthy breakfast. Whether it's through a drive through I can still probably get some eggs somewhere. We have Shakeology, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it is possible. Drink water. I can drink water no matter where I'm at and move my body, even if that meant 
being at a hospital room with my son walking up and down the, uh, the hallways of the hospital. But what's your business non-negotiables? That's all fine and dandy for me being a person, but we're all here as Beachbody coaches. What are your three non-negotiables when the storm hits? Because if you don't think a storm's coming, it is. You don't know when, you don't know how, and I'm not talking about the hurricane that just came through. <laughs> Something is gonna stop you dead in your tracks that's gonna make you question, why am I here? Do I belong? Am I supposed to be a beach body coach? I can't do this, life is too hard. I want you to think of three non-negotiables that you can do in your business every single day, no matter if the shit hits the fan. Write that down, put it in your notes, put it up here, put it to paper. Three non-negotiables that are doable. Then when you think of that, I want you to think of your why. Right there is my why. That's only one of my children. My family is written down below. My husband's over there. But those three non-negotiables should support your why. Because at the end of the day, if you're not doing it for your why, it's not gonna support your business in the long run. You're not gonna get past the storm. My why, my first why is my son. That's why I started this business. Because I had to find an opportunity where I could be at home, look after him and his mental health needs, look after my own mental health and try to get out of that shit show of a storm. And there's still storms. They look different than they did when I first started this business, but my why has remained consistent and always will. Your past. Your past is gonna determine where you're going in your future. That's me in my early 20s. I was 250 pounds. I've struggled with weight all my life. My past history has taught me a lot and I know that life is tough and and one single decision can change it. When that storm comes, if you make the wrong decision based on a temporary storm, that can make an impact of your whole life. We've seen a lot of coaches quit during a storm. Had they stuck it out with their non-negotiables of why they're important to maintain it, had those three non-negotiables that they said they promised to themselves every single day, I'll stick it out, no matter what happens, their future would look a lot different now. And anyone who's sitting in this room, whether you're going through a storm right now, or the storm happens when you go home today, or a year down the road, I want you to think back to this moment and think, don't make a decision based on the storm. Go to your three non-negotiables and let that lead the way. Whoa. So are you open for business? This is a reality check time. Like I kind of said, people know your coaches, but they don't know if you're inviting to them or if they think you're inviting to the other guy. How do I know you're a coach? If I went in on your social media right now and took a look at your uh, Instagram and your Facebook, are you open for business? Are you there 24 seven? You gotta be kind of like, uh, you know, the convenience store, right? Because if you're not open for business every single day, guess who they're gonna find? The person to the right or the person to the left of you. And we're all one big community, but when people are searching for somebody, when they are in the middle of their storm, and let's say they decide health and fitness is gonna be their journey, your store better be open because you want to be the first person they think of and the first person who comes to mind when they think body, not beach body anymore, body. We want to be there. So have you spoken in your stories? Have you, you know, posted on your Facebook? Does anybody know about healthy obsession? These are all things that we need to share as coaches, but we also need to share the opportunity as well. And I'm working on that myself, still sharing the opportunity. But be honest with yourself. Are you showing up for yourself? 
If you haven't pressed play on your own workout, how can you be a proof of the product or it's one of our vitals? It's not about being a certain size, a certain weight, or look at certain parts. It's just about showing up and you want to be showing up for yourself every day and showcase that and share that with everybody. Are you showing up for your team? Are you checking in with your team members? Are you checking in with your, you know, your fellow coaches or the people there? Are you showing up for your audience? People are watching and they're watching to see if you're going to fail too, because that's the kind of society we live in. But you're going to keep showing up. You're going to keep showing up because you're meant to be here. Next slide. So show up, show out, and be a team player. Nothing that I believe that I've received in the Beachbody, uh, you know, time I've been a coach has been from staying on the sidelines. Any event, any time, any opportunity, there was a chance to say yes, I have said yes. Even uh, Danielle and I, uh, I always say, say yes, figure it out later. That should be your motto. Say yes and let's figure it out later. Because if you don't say yes right away, insert all the reasons why I can't do it. Oh my God, you know, it's a Friday and the kids are there and blah, 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 blah. We will talk ourselves out of it before we talk ourselves into it. Would you like? Yes. I don't even know what you just asked, but I'll say yes. So make that your motto. Show up for your Beachbody event. Show up for your team calls. There is a lot of effort put into these team calls that you don't see behind the scene. Oh, I'm just kind of tired. The kids, you know, um, you know, these are all there for you. Show up, show out and say yes and be there when opportunity knocks. Here's some opportunities that now that the world is open again, you know, this was Success Club in the top corner. Uh, this was at Summit and here this was at Leadership. I said yes to all of those. You don't have, well, except for leadership, you don't have to be invited to go there. You have the choice to show up every single time. I know finances are tough. I just gasped at the price of eggs the other day. <laughs> it was the first time I bought eggs full price in weeks. And, but you can earn this opportunity. The opportunity is there. Next slide. Okay, this is a little cringy, but I want you all to do it. Take out your phones right now, and I want you to take a selfie. And that means everybody in the room, not the guy next to you. Samantha, get your phone out. I see you looking. Take a selfie. Make it a good one. Come on now. You're used to this. You're coaches. You got to take two, that's okay, I'll allow time for retakes. <laughs> good, good. If anyone has not taken a selfie yet, I'm looking at you right now. You have the opportunity. So I want you to look at that photo you just took. I want you to bookmark that photo and put that in a special album. Print it off, if anyone still does that, I don't know. <laughs> Share that on social media. Because this is a photo that when the shit hits the fan and your storms come, that you're going to refer back to. And I want you to put it in a photo album called Shit Storm, Storm, Anything. <laughs> because this is the photo of the person that belongs here. You do belong. And that person in the photo is worthy of being here today, tomorrow, the next day, and so on and so forth. So if you ever forget that, go back to that photo. Because this is the moment that should hopefully put a little spark in your life. And if you were on the fence when you walked through this room today, I hope you look back on that photo and remember why you chose to come here, because what if?